thank you for joining us. We're about to start our program tonight. Um, so welcome Wakefield community. Uh, welcome again, thank you for joining us. Tonight, we're holding our first of four public workshops for the Wakefield master planning process. Our agenda for tonight will cover only two of the master plan's eight planning elements. After some brief introductions, we'll cover the purpose and process, the meeting objective and the format, and then some brief demographics. Then we'll discuss our first topic, which is land use and zoning, to discuss how to influence different areas in town for growth, enhancements, and or preservation. Our second topic will be open space and recreation, where we'll explore ideas of, for parks, squares, and leisure opportunities. Once our meeting has concluded, we strongly suggest to any Wakefield community member to please take the online survey on these two topics so we can gather your feedback to measure and discern consensus ideas. Now we'll do some brief introductions and I'll turn it over to Aaron Kakinda. Thank you, Carlos. Um, sorry, I'm just having some connection problems here. Um, so hi, I'm Erin Kokinda, the Community and Economic Development Director. I want to thank you all for being here. Um, I know this is a process that I think many of you have wanted to um, start and be part of, and so I want to thank you all. Um, I want to first also thank people that were part of the Vision 2030 process. The, um, you know, this is kind of the segue into doing this. So Thank you very much. And um, also I wanna thank Jen McDonald who is our content and communications director and Steve Mayo and everyone else that has been part of this process. I'm sorry, my, I can't see who's on this and I'm sure there's a lot of counselors on this, um, but this process, I'm really looking forward to it to see you know, how we can preserve the town that many people like and love and, and then how we can move it forward as well as um, you know, what the direction people want it, want it to be. So I'm gonna pass it back to Carlos. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you Aaron for that. So, so my name is Carlos Montanez and I'm a principal planner at uh, MAPC. I'm also the project manager leading the Wakefield master plan process. Uh, the town of Wakefield's contracted with MAPC to facilitate the community process perform the analyses and to draft the plan report blending both community input with recommended best planning practices. Also joining us tonight from our MAPC consultant team is our community engagement specialist, Naji Nanali, and our event specialist, Sashi Perot, Sasha Perotti, who will also be assisting with Zoom tech and or facilitation tonight. I can't recall <laughs> both. Okay, thank you for that. Also on our intro slide, we have the names of our 26 advisory group members and our two liaisons from the town council and the planning board. We wanna thank them for their participation and their feedback thus far in the prior AG working sessions, as well as on, on the online input exercises. Now, before we re, um, go on with the rest of our program, I believe, uh, Najee, you have, um, we're gonna do a brief who's in the room poll, is that correct? Correct. Yes. So if you don't mind going down to your poll section okay. um, down on your side, um, and I believe you can just press activate um, and it'll disperse it out. So everyone, if you could just take a couple minutes to complete that poll, it'll just give us some demographic information to know who's in the space um, and that'll help us afterwards as well. Um, Carlos, have you activated it? Yeah, it's active. I, I can. I, I've okay. never actually done this one. No, you're good. You're good. Can so everyone can else see it? Activity. Yeah. You're good. All right, great. <laughs> We're good. Cool. Thank you. You can't see it, Najee. I cannot. I think it's because I'm co-host, um, okay. which is fine. Yeah. And then uh, Carlos, you'll be able to see the poll results as well on your side. Yeah, yeah I can see it, um, and everyone else can see it in real time as well. Is that correct? Yeah. Right. That's what all right, so here we have representation from, I think everyone's participated. We have representation from different neighborhoods and you can see different age groups. 
and or just end, end the poll now, Naji? Uh, if everyone has completed and submitted it already, that works. Okay, thank you everyone for doing that for us. Appreciate it. Share results. Oh, I can share my screen. Okay, I've never actually done this one actively myself. All right. I feel you. <laughs> so, there we go. So now resuming back to our program. So uh, MAPC is the regional planning agency for Greater Boston. We function as a public consultancy and we try to help communities in order to supplement <clears throat> their local planning capacity, perform analyses, brainstorm ideas, and try to find common solutions to problems that other communities also face. And APC is also a mission-based agency. And on the slide are a few excerpts from our mission statement. Um, MAPC promotes smart growth, regional collaboration, equity and diversity as part of our addressing community concerns that affect people from a variety of backgrounds uh, all across many communities in greater Boston. Wakefield's master planning process is not starting from zero since the town recently completed a pre-master plan vision process. We can benefit from using the recently completed vision statement and some of its priority goals to jumpstart our discussions for continued exploration. The visioning was high level and provided great context for how, for us now to be able to be more comprehensive and detailed about eight planning topics and potential recommendations. Ideally, the final master plan report will be occasionally consulted during the next 120 months at board and committee meetings to provide context for more immediate decisions on project proposals and decisions on investments. The master plan will also strive to make connections between topics and highlight trade-offs. Using community input from our surveys, we hope to identify and prioritize community goals and devise corresponding recommendations. On a more general level, uh, master plans can help communities to provide their residents and businesses with mutual certainty as to what they can potentially expect in terms of physical improvements, public facilities and services, and changes in specific areas in town for growth, preservation, or enhancement. In addition to being grounded in existing conditions, data, and demographics, master planning can also be aspirational, similar to the visioning. Data will be referenced and analyzed to help with recommendations, but community input can also help shape where Wakefield goes by the year 2033. The master plan report may include a lengthy list of goals and recommendations, and we'll try to prioritize them in a certain sequence to help Wakefield gradually accomplish its own goals um, the next 10 years. Hopefully there will be a few really compelling common ground ideas that Wakefield residents can rally around to keep alive at future board and, and council meetings. The slide on the screen shows the general process timeline with uh, four public forums interspersed with five advisory group working sessions. Thus far, We've had two advisory group working sessions and extended online exercises to collectively draft the survey questions that are paired with tonight's Zoom workshop at the end of the meeting. That survey on those two topics will be active for three weeks for any and all Wakefield community members to take. <clears throat> Our AG members will be helping to facilitate some of tonight's small uh, group breakout discussion groups. Uh, we have worked with the advisory group to draft purposeful survey questions that touch on planning subtopics that can provide some useful insight into possible master plan goals and actionable recommendations. This slide shows how the eight planning topics that have, have been sequenced over the course of four public forums each of the four workshops will last two hours and feature two distinct master plan topics at each workshop. Should any member not be able to attend the given workshop, a combination of a, the three week online survey on those specific topics will be available to record their individual input 
as well as the PowerPoint presentation and a recording of the meeting. Our meeting objective for tonight is to present a few minutes of informational slides on a topic before we all break out into smaller Zoom rooms for a facilitated discussion so that participating community members can hear each other's ideas before we ask everyone to take the poll after at the end of the meeting. Um, as we did with uh, Wakefield's uh, pre-master plan visioning process, Vision 2030, we will emphasize to all Wakefield community members to take the survey since community input from it will be the primary form of standardized feedback that will allow us to measure community input and determine consensus on a variety of planning subtopics, questions, and issues. This, um, this slide highlights in yellow the survey link that will be active after tonight's meeting for three weeks until April 27th. And it'll be available at the end of the slide as well as the, the meeting tonight. Now we'll briefly cover some context demographics before starting our first topic of the night. This map, map highlights Wakefield's business districts, neighborhoods, and open spaces. In the center is Wakefield's downtown area between its two prominent lakes. The areas in red are the retail business areas. The areas in purple are zoned for industrial commercial uses, and the areas in green show the open spaces. You can also see the two commuter rail locations identified with the small t icon. Wakefield is an established suburban community 10 miles north of Boston. Given that Wakefield is a mature community approaching build out, new opportunities for growth are likely to occur via flexible and creative redevelopment of underutilized infill opportunity sites. The town's population has remained relatively stable with modest three to 11% growth since 1960. Of the very few census 2020 data sets that have been released, we have that Wakefield's population has increased by 8% from 2010. Compared to the county and the region, Wakefield is less diverse racially. It has a median household income of approximately 95,000, but there is a 54% difference between family and non-family household incomes. The town's educational attainment levels are comparable with Middlesex County. When compared to Middlesex County, Wakefield's median single family home sales price of approximately $562,000 is 5% higher. However, its median condo sales price is $441,000 is 9% lower than the county. Looking at its tax base, Wakefield has diverse revenue sources with 58% coming from residential properties 13% from commercial properties, and 3% from industrial. Lastly, regarding transportation, Wakefield has 4% higher work commute times compared with the state average. In terms of how residents commute, 82% drive alone, while almost a fifth of town take, another, take other alternatives, including carpooling. 8% take public transportation and 2% walk to work. Lastly, when it comes to different options for getting around, we should consider the mobility needs and challenges of residents with accessibility challenges. Approximately 5% of residents have an ambulatory difficulty and another 5% have difficulty living independently. Now we'll move on to our two main workshop topics with information topic slides before each discussion and ultimately that post-meeting survey. Our first master plan topic tonight is land use and zoning. We like to describe, which we like to describe in a less abstract manner as thinking about areas in town 
we could focus on for potential future growth sub areas, as well as areas for minor and moderate enhancements and areas that deserve preservation and protection. Land use is a general term used to describe the primary use occurring on a tract of land at any given time. It's not permanent and it, it can and does change often over time. For example, a residential subdivision can be built on former farmland or a residential condo can be built on the site of a former hotel. Zoning land use regs are a tool for communities to slowly shape the physical landscape through permitting determine the proportion of area dedicated to residential and non-residential uses and affect tax revenue generation for the town. Some districts can be single use while others can allow multiple uses. The purpose of this master plan element is to emphasize connections and trade-offs between regulations and other master planning topics. It's also worth mentioning, uh, currently planners nationwide have been reevaluating past planning and zoning practices with an eye toward greater inclusion of uses as part of better emerging practices to avoid unintended exclusionary zoning. It's worth making a connection also to the state's updated environmental justice policy. It's intended to better serve the needs of the most vulnerable residents Wakefield has two census block groups near Wakefield Center and the Industrial Foundry Street area that qualify <clears throat> as EJ communities and represent about 4% of the town's population. We're also building upon the community input and the consensus goals from the recently completed Vision 2030 and the vision statement highlighted in blue are some of the ideas that can relate to land use and zoning. Community consensus among Vision 2030 participants included exploring permissive and flexible zoning, commercial property reinvestment, neighborhood amenities, improving business districts, and creative placemaking amenities. Um, at 55%, over half of the land in Wakefield is currently being used for residential purposes. 29% of the land is being used for a combination of government, institutional, and tax exempt uses, and 11% for commercial uses and 4% for industrial. Mixed uses constitute only a half of a percent. 41% of the town's existing acreage is being used for single family, single families in the single family residential district. So this, this slide shows land use acreages by the zoning district. So it's, it's, an, it's another take. 9% is being used for single families and two families in that GR general residence zoning district and 23% of the town acreage is being used for a combination of government, institutional, and tax exempt uses in the three residential zoning districts. Now that we briefly reviewed how the land is currently being used, this slide shows how much of the land the town has set aside for certain zoning districts. Um, so 63% of the land has been set aside for single family, 21% is set aside for those ones and twos in that GR district, which is near Wakefield Center and Greenwood. And 9% has been set aside for industrial and 4% for business. And the remaining zoning districts each account for 1% or less of the land in, in town. This slide shows some highlighted overlay zoning districts that add on an additional protections over some of those underlying base zoning districts. The town has eight overlays. For example, the wireless communications overlay covers 13% of the town land. It's also worth highlighting that the town's mixed use overlay zoning accounts for 1% of the land or 48 acres in total. 
Moving on from existing conditions to potential ideas and opportunities, what could be Wakefield's general approach or strategy for its business and commercial industrial districts? Are there any desired uses by the community such as jobs, services, or leisure retail? And are any of the zoning regs, or no, are the zoning regs clear and permissive? Is the development review process straightforward for potential businesses in town? Thinking along those lines, um, are, are, are there areas in and near downtown, such as the Foundry Street or New Salem Street corridors, where the town could allow a variety of mixed uses that cover many potentially desired and needed community uses? Could some of these areas be leveraged to attract jobs and services and expand the tax base? When considering potential future zoning, one could consider the potential impact on allowing or deterring certain industry sectors and businesses, and by extension, the number of employees in town. Other considerations to have in mind when considering future zoning could be making sure um, that the district purpose and intent is aligned with other regulations so as to not be counterproductive. Allowing for flexibility and removing obstacles for desired uses by making sure that the land use regs work with the dimensional regs and the parking ratios is, is a strategy. Similarly, um, take, being careful to minimize the need for special permitting for desired uses in town. Overall, in terms of what uses Wakefield allows um, in its zoning without having to consult a very lengthy detailed individual uh, line items and a, a regs table, Wakefield has four residential districts that overwhelmingly allow single family uses um, at 64% of the land and ones and two fams at about a fifth of the land. 4% of the land is, um, allows general town-wide businesses. 1% of the land is for offices and non-retail. And 9% of the land is for industrial. And again, that 1% of the land for mixed uses requires obtaining a special permit for it which could be seen as a, a, an obstacle for potential um, businesses and investment. In terms of dimensional uses, uh, preliminary GIS analysis of the parcels reveal residential districts have an average open area between 53% and 85%, with 10% to 29% dedicated to parking area. And, four, and only four to 17% of the parcel dedicated to the building footprints themselves. So that kind of gives you a ratio of allocation of what's, be, what's occurring on the parcels. For parking ratios, it's worth noting that the master plan report will not result in rezonings and instead only in recommendations and insights for potential future district specific studies. As a part of those future zoning studies that could occur, the town could consider analyses focusing on recalibrating parking ratios to reduce housing costs, encourage sustainable transportation options, and also alleviate congestion and emissions. Um, a recent MAPC perfect fit parking study um, involved looking at 200 Metro Boston condos and apartments and it revealed that three out of 10 parking spaces went underutilized overnight. Now some possible slides on ideas for growth. Could the town consider more mixed use redevelopment proposals with upper story housing and ground floor retail? What about areas in town where the focus could be more Modest, on more modest streetscape amenities and enhancements for activation. What types of enhancements and where could, could they occur? This slide shows um, how public streets 
can be reallocated to accommodate areas for um, amenities. So it's a, it's a way, it's a different way of looking at the existing space and the right of way. And, and we've seen this happen throughout the pandemic where people have made space for uh, uses that typically weren't there in the public realm. Here are some other ideas and examples for streetscape amenities, such as a painted mural on a blank downtown wall with oversized shelf books. Um, in terms of ideas for preservation in town, the town could consider as a potential new tool for funding projects, passing the Community Preservation Act, Act like 178 other communities have, to levy a surcharge of up to 3% um, to raise money for preserving historic sites. If passed, it could also unlock matching state funding as well. Lastly, on this topic, what about leveraging a zoning overlay district for a lakeside protection area, as has been mentioned before during other town discussions? These work best when they cover two or more underlying zoning districts. They can introduce new standards to achieve a desired purpose in an area. And with that, that concludes the, the informational um, slides for our first topic. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Naji, our community engagement specialist for our breakout groups. Thank you for that, Carlos. Thank you for putting that wonderful presentation together. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so now it's time for the, the fun part and for us to really hear your voices. Um, so all of you all are accessing Zoom from your local device. Um, and so to engage in, in the Zoom space, the breakout rooms, um, you can click participants at the bottom. You can go to your name. You can raise your hand. Or if you look at the bottom, it may be like two um, two signals to the right, sorry. Um, and you can go to reactions and there's, you can use emojis or you can also raise your hand that way. So if you're not necessarily looking to be verbal in the space, you can also enter that into the chat. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so these are discussion agreements. Um, so these are essentially our space norms. So these are uh, norms that we have um, created that we feel like everyone can um, um, hold up this agreement. Um, and so generally we would have taken the time to like sit with you and have everyone contribute and have a group agreement, um, but we created them. Um, so based upon the ones we have created, if you have any ideas, if you would like to add a, an additional norm, feel free to email us um, and we'll make sure we do that, add that in the future. Um, so just to highlight a couple of these, use I statements, um, you know, always speak on behalf of yourself, not necessarily from others, take space, make space. Um, so if you're not necessarily participating the most, you know, feel free to take up some space. This is what it's for. We really want to hear your voice um, and your perspective. Uh, make space. Um, so if you are, you know, speaking a little bit more than some of the others in your space, kind of just take a moment with a pause and see if anyone else is contributing and create space for those folks. Um, um, use accessible language. Uh, so something I often do is use a lot of acronyms. Um, and so try to stay clear from using acronyms. Um, accept and expect a lack of closure. Everyone is different. Um, so just kind of respect that. Listen for understanding, be an active participant, of course, and expand your comfort zone. This is a great time to do so. Um, you get to know some of your neighbors as well. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so just additionally, so these are, we'll have a small breakout group discussion. So we'll have two this evening. We have one opening up shortly. These are uh, the few of the questions that will be asked. Um, and so in at each space, we have a uh, facilitator. I'm a facilitator for one of the groups. And then we have a note taker as well. So as just a reminder, um, raise your hand so the moderator can unmute you and you know you can feel free to chime in. And again, if you're not necessarily comfortable with the verbal piece, feel free to just uh, chime in on the chat portion at the bottom. Thank you. Thank you for that. So I think now we will be allocated, right? I think into the breakout groups. Good question. So we don't have the amount of people that signed up. Are we still going to do the same amount or just breakout rooms? We can, what do you think? What's, what's the ideal target number or? Um, so I think all of our facilitators are on, um, so we can just have smaller spaces, if anything. So we have yeah. 50 in total. Um, so maybe it's what, like five, 
to 10 per room. Okay. Seven to 10. Yeah. Where yeah. are the others? <laughs> <laughs> hey, they, they might be making dinner, who knows? Um, cool, so we'll create those breakout spaces. Um, and so I believe we're a half hour, 30 minutes or so in, the, um, in each of these breakout rooms. So we had a good discussion and we got cut off from our breakout group. I don't know if that happened to you, um, but hope you enjoyed your uh, breakout discussion. So now we're gonna move on to our second topic. Um, can you see my screen or not yet? Not yet, okay. Let's where? There we go, how about now? Okay, yep. awesome. Let's get back to this then. So, we're moving on to our next or second master plan topic of the night, open space. Um, the purpose of the purpose of the open space element of the master plan is to provide an overview of existing parks and conditions and also to help assess community needs and desires um, as they relate to open space and recreation. When considering open space, one can consider passive versus active needs, grassy parks, as well as hardscape squares in town and village centers, natural areas, as well as manicured gardens. For recreation, one can explore ideas and the need for indoor and outdoor facilities, things like simple comfort amenities, as well as sports facilities versus facilities for civic and social gatherings. The master plan's open space element uh, will not get into site level designs and the needs of individual parks and instead is intended to identify priority ideas for desired park improvements and separately to think about priority spaces and parks that deserve future detailed studies. So the the town's pre-master plan vision 2030 statement also touched on some community consensus for open space ideas in town. These emphasized the importance of protecting the beautiful natural landscape, as well as Wakefield's signature open spaces. Uh, uh, participants also said they wanted more creative placemaking amenities and events. Other ideas included um, the idea of a lakeside promenade, um, as well as a possible outdoor performance center. Some Vision 2030 priority goals also touched on the desire for more pedestrian trails in town. In terms of open space conditions, the town has 51 parks and spaces, including private ones, totaling 612 acres and representing 12% of the town's land area. And of course, there are um, Wakefield's two significant water bodies and assets, uh, Lake Quanapawit and Crystal Lake. 84% is municipally owned, 10% is private or other, and 6% is the portion of the Breakheart Reservation within Wakefield. And the largest owner managers are the public works department and the school department at 31% and 20% respectively. In terms of primary purpose of those open spaces, approximately a third are for, of the acreage are for recreational uses. Another third of the acreage is for conservation and a fifth of the town acreage is for a combination of recreation and conservation spaces and parks. In terms of public access, 90% of the open space acreage is publicly accessible and 10% is limited or restricted. Fifty-five percent of the open space acreage in town or 28 park spaces are permanently protected and the other ones have either limited or no protection. Uh, 
existing initiatives in Wakefield um, include the rail trail project, which is uh, for, promote, uh, for pedestrians and bicyclists using um, a shared path. The town's 1.9 mile segment has been approved at the 25% design level as of March, 2019, and has been funded by MassDOT's fiscal year 2026 for construction then. Wakefield has been involved also in Mass in Motion, um, Walk Wakefield State Program, um, in order to promote active living and healthy eating. Another local initiative is the Safe Street Working Group, which is considering a pilot program for a Lake Recreation Sunday to promote a walking event along nearby roads. The Safe Routes to School Program has been working school children to make walking and biking safer and also to improve overall health. And the town's been working on improving downtown streets with the downtown street concepts consistent with its complete streets policy. Complete streets aims to balance the existing roads to also safely accommodate pedestrians and cyclists. In January 2020, the Albion Street improvements were approved for funding by MassDOT for pedestrian improvements, crosswalks, and also bike share markings. Um, the town has a total of 30 ranked priority projects in its complete streets plan. Now we're moving from now we move from existing conditions to ideas and opportunities. So what types of ideas for parks do you have? What are the open space needs for Wakefield residents? This slide shows examples of park improvements that you could consider just to start the conversation. Uh, among them are passive recreation areas for picnics, benches and tot lots, paths and promenades for walking and jogging, and also outdoor performance areas. Now, which open spaces and facilities in Wayfield might need improvements? This map color codes the open spaces for their primary purpose for either recreation, conservation, historic and cultural, et cetera. The following are existing resources that could, put, um, that could help the town with assessing community open space needs as well as determining future park design studies and, and identifying funding sources. The first step we ask is to please take the survey after this um, during the next three weeks, once this meeting has concluded, so that the master plan can have useful and standardized community input data on the parks. The second opportunity for the town involves a potential future update of the town's more detailed open space and recreation plan, which can help with more detailed site level analyses and make also the town eligible for state park grants. And that's park with a C, not a K. Lastly, uh, consider the Community Preservation Act again to potentially fund preserving open space as well as funds for developing outdoor recreational facilities. This slide includes a map of the 178 communities in Massachusetts that have passed the CPA or Community Preservation Act, and they're color coded by towns in orange and uh, towns in green and cities in orange. Now this slide shows the current fiscal year 2022 funds that were dispersed to those 178 communities in Massachusetts that have the Community Preservation Act. The median local surcharge committed was $562,000 and the median state match was $336,000 that those communities can use for real improvements to parks as well as protecting open space and acquiring land for open space creation. Now, moving on to here are a few photo um, 
examples of possible ideas for parks and recreational amenities to elicit your reaction in the breakout groups. They include things like dog parks, sculptures and parks, interpretive nature signage for wildlife. This slide shows additional ideas for inspiration. Um, they include outdoor performance spaces, a lakeside promenade, an outdoor skating rink, and also an oversized whimsical sculptures, including an, uh, a troll sculpture made out of recycled wood with a swing for kids to play on. <laughs> Lastly, regarding ideas, could it be possible to consider nominal access to the lawn near Crystal Lake off of Broadway and Foundry for limited seasonal events on the lawn. This could be done um, in tandem with possible street festivals along Albion Street and Foundry Street. The slide, this slide shows an example of how other communities like Cambridge allow for fenced off walking trails along the Fresh Pond Reservation, which is part of their water supply and managed by their water department. And with that, that concludes um, our informational topic slides on open space and recreation. And I'll turn it over to Naji again um, and Sasha so we can do our breakout groups. Perfect, thank you for that, Carlos. Uh, so we're back again for another breakout group time. Um, so I know there was a couple people that joined again. Um, so just to, uh, to that join new. Um, so at the bottom of your, of your device, you'll see participants. And on there, if you go to the right, you'll be able to raise your hand. Um, so you can speak in your group or you can go a couple widgets over and uh, click on reactions. There's going to be some emojis that pop up and on the bottom of it, um, underneath the emojis, you can then click uh, raise hand um, and then the facilitator will select you and you can feel free to chime in. Um, if you're not necessarily comfortable with uh, being verbal, no problem. Feel free to just include um, a quick sentiment in the chat. Next slide, please. Um, so these are discussion agreements, group norms. Um, so use I statements, refer to yourself, not necessarily on the behalf of others. Take space and make space. So just be mindful of who's in your space. If you're talking or contributing a lot, just take a pause and kind of see if there's the opportunity for others to contribute as well. Um, and if you haven't really contributed, this is the time to do so. So feel free to just kind of interject and, you know, um, state what your, your, your perspective is. Um, so use accessible language. I use acronyms oftentimes. Um, try to stay clear from using acronyms. Listen for understanding, accept and expect a lack of closure. Everyone is different. Um, be an active participant and expand your comfort zone. These are your neighbors, so feel free to engage. Next slide, please. Um, so we're going to have a few questions that the facilitators will be asking. So in each space, there's a facilitator and then a note taker. So I'm a facilitator in my group. Um, and then again, just as a reminder, please raise your hand and the facilitator will call on you. Uh, and again, if you don't necessarily feel comfortable speaking out loud, um, feel free to um, uh, contribute in the chat. Thank you. Uh, next slide, please, Carlos. So at this point, we're just doing the breakout group. So that's the link on the, just so we know, we're going to break out into the, to this, to do these breakout groups for open space. But I want everyone to make note also of the survey link on the screen right now. Um, it's mapc.ma slash WMP for Wakefield Master Plan. 2033, survey one, the number one. So again, that's mapc.ma slash WMP 203030, survey one. Thank you for that, Carlos. Um, so now we will begin in our breakout rooms. I'll open all the rooms. Yeah, I believe it should be everyone that was in your last group should be there again this time. All right, so thank you for that. We had. We, in our breakout group, we had a really lovely discussion, some really good ideas on types of open space improvements and also where. Um, so I just wanna to say thank you. Um, are there any questions? I think we have a few minutes actually yeah, before 8.30. Are there any questions about 
uh, tonight or next steps? Uh, Carlos, if I could um, add, this is Bill. Um, facilitating these groups has really worked out well. I think we hear a lot. There's, um, we're looking for more um, resources. Is there a place that we can put together a list of like some of the existing facilities and recreation, like what's public versus private? Uh, is that, do you know if that list exists? And I know maybe Aaron could answer it's that. It's on too. my slides. So, um, so I can, we can post the, you, you mean the, the detailed park by park analysis? Um, yeah, we saw that long list that had all the bullet points all the way down of like um, the protected land, I think it was, yeah. that list. Yeah, something like that. that. That's the first time I've seen that full list. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, Is that creative. something? Okay, <laughs> thanks. So, <laughs> so, so we can, we can um, we'll, we'll share the PowerPoint and I can, um, I think this, they're legible, but I can also create the uh, spreadsheets and send them over. Thank so you. We'll, that, yeah. I can add those to the project page yeah, thank for you. everybody to look at. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. So, so we just took GIS data and we did a, a sort. So that was a, a lot of sorting. But thank you, everyone. Are, are there any other ideas or questions? If not, please get the word out on the survey, please. So uh, really important. And we're going to post the, the PowerPoint, the recording, and the survey link on the Project Towns project page. Um, you don't have to, anyone can take the survey. We would encourage that, that they look at the slide deck before, but that's not necessary either, as long as many people take it, then they'll have rich data to analyze. So with that said, thank you everyone for joining us. We had really good discussions and uh, we'll be planning the next advisory group and the next public forum. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Thanks.